Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review of this limited edition. Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Masterpiece in Rosewood Ebonite. I know it's only been a couple of weeks since I reviewed my newest Momento Zero Grande 2 in Stardust, but don't get the impression that I buy these expensive pens every day or every couple of weeks. Through the magic of video editing, it just looks like I bought them two weeks apart. The Stardust was actually purchased on Fountain Pen Day, the beginning of November 2022. I didn't get it until the beginning of December and then didn't review it until just two weeks ago. Well, three weeks ago. And I snagged this new Leonardo on January 9th, received it on the 16th, and today is the 28th. I had to jump on this fountain pen. I fell in love with it while looking for a Leonardo for my friend Ron's birthday. The danger in shopping for someone else is that you come home with three times more stuff for yourself. It was the same thing when I was selling guitars for Long McQuaid after I retired from teaching. I wound up buying more gear than I was selling. Gotta rehearse my song! <laughs> I had to cut my expenses, so I quit that job. This limited edition Ebonite Leonardo Masterpiece really caught my eye. I love Rosewood. This is my Martin 00028 VS, and it has a solid Rosewood back and sides. The Leonardo looks more like the very rare and highly sought after Brazilian rosewood with its reddish tones than this Indian rosewood. Unfortunately, the pens are sold out on Leonardo's website, as are almost all of the limited edition Leonardos there. So I did a worldwide search for the Masterpiece Ebonite Rosewood that was in stock somewhere. I found one in stock and on sale at Wonder Pens in an all of places, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. That it was in stock and on sale in Canada forced me to buy it immediately. It wasn't my fault. It was the fickle finger of fate that pressed that buy now button. I'm not responsible. It's time once again for the flying fickle finger of fate award. The award for eight balls of the year must go to Soviet Russia. You see, in fact, the Russians are such a freedom loving people that they wanted all the freedom they could get their hands on. So they took Czechoslovakia's too. <laughs> oh, to Russia with love, you sure earned it the hard way. Well, my credit card is responsible actually. In a way, all of you viewers out there are responsible. I wouldn't be up to my ass in pens if it weren't for your encouragement. Is that, is that my ass? My worst pen of 2022 video generated enough revenue alone to pay for a down payment on this extraordinary fountain pen. People love videos where I crap on stuff or walk to the mailbox in the snow. You know who you are. I'm thinking of doing a monthly video, my crappy pen of the month where I rant about a fountain pen or a fountain pen company while trudging through the snow in minus 30 degrees Celsius weather. If I ever do a rant on this fountain pen though, it will be about how fortunate I am to own this incredible writing instrument and to have the means to share it with you inquiring minds out there. So let's take a look right now. <laughs> So it's been a couple of years since I've had a Grail pen, and this was my Grail pen, my Pelican M800, beautiful fountain pen. Uh, but I went and I splurged, and I found what I think is the last of the Leonardo Masterpiece Rosewood Ebonite series. So here we are. Rosewood Ebonite series, and lo and behold, it was in Canada. So I figured that was a sign. I have to have it. So here we are. I'm open it from the bottom. And here it is. It looks just like the packaging for my Momento Zero Grande Stardust. But this is a very special pen and it comes with something else too. So they packed the ink separately. And it is black. I don't have any Leonardo black. Clamshell. International guarantee. There it is. Oh my goodness. And there
there it is folks look at that ebonite who knew ebonite could look so beautiful this rosewood is even better than in the photos piston filler momento zero grande and it has a 14 karat gold la finisse la finisse i'm gonna have to figure out what that means but they're made at leonardo and this is abroad well i can hardly wait to ink this up and give it a try the leonardo momento zero grande in rosewood ebonite stunning fountain pen so i'm going to show the parts and features of this pen some size comparisons measurements and then provide a writing sample and then i'll talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen the dislikes will be very short indeed overall the pen is a grande size momento zero first we have to look at this amazing ebonite the most incredible thing about a pen made of ebonite isn't visible it's how it feels there's something organic about how ebonite feels in the hand it's warm it's smooth it feels like velvet even though it's hard and smooth i thought it might be lighter than the acrylic but it's actually a couple of grams heavier that surprised me because it feels lighter in the hand somehow perhaps that is because of its warmth compared to the acrylic i don't know it's some kind of voodoo now go to that voodoo that you do so well and what about this pattern that looks like rosewood rosewood is one of the most sought after tone woods for making acoustic guitar back and sides and the most beautiful i'm not fond of fountain pens made of natural wood this simulated rosewood is ebonite and it's even better than real rosewood there are no pores to deal with or environmental issues where real wood dries out and cracks this is an extraordinarily beautiful fountain pen from the top we see the conical pointed finial and how the red and black ebonite comes together it almost looks like one of those stereogram images that makes me crazy because i can never actually see the image the cap tapers up to a large gold plated cap band bordered by two thin gold rings leonardo says the central band is engraved with a three-dimensional pantograph and represents a geometric pattern that now characterizes the leonardo style a pantograph is a parallelogram linkage that allows a drawing or an object to be traced and scaled up it can be used in manufacturing for engraving here you can see the chapter indices of a watch dial being engraved on a pantograph machine i don't know whether this pattern was made with a pantograph or not but it's a really nice pattern of intersecting diagonals with italy printed vertically on the back the clip is the typical leonardo roller clip that harkens back to the delta fountain pen days it's nicely springy and very very usable the step down to the barrel is integrated into the cap the top of the barrel has another gold ring and then the barrel tapers down in two stages one very shallow and then one steeper taper to another gold ring that separates the barrel from the piston filling knob which ends in another conical pointed finial the cap unscrews with one rotation to reveal the ebonite section which is the new mzg 2.0 shape not like the original mzg milk bottle shape the section is a tapered barrel with a flare towards the number six size 14 karat gold la Fenice broad nib that is made in-house by leonardo and the barrel is engraved with leonardo 058 slash 100 meaning it's the 58th piece of 100 made in this limited edition let's get a closer look at this nib i made an error in my review of the leonardo mzg 2.0 stardust fountain pen stating that the new nib stamping indicates the nib is made in-house by leonardo this is incorrect as only the 14 karat gold nibs with the new stamping are made in-house the steel nibs with this pattern are from yovo not leonardo so the 14 karat gold nibs only are the la fenice nibs and la fenice translated from the italian means the phoenix i posted an image of this nib on leonardo's facebook page and posed this question salvatore matrone a question for you O master of the masterpiece la fenice translates from the italian as the phoenix 
Now I'm going to speculate here and assume you named this Leonardo's first in-house nib, La Fenice, because the phoenix rises from its own ashes and this is your homage to your father Ciro and the fact that this is the first time since Delta you're making your own nibs. Am I close? Salvatore never answered me, but I did get a thumbs up from both Salvatore and his father Ciro. I'm going to call those two thumbs up a yes. The nib has the wonderful La Fenice pattern, Leonardo, Italy, 14 KT for 14 karat gold, and the Leonardo wings, along with the wonderful Phoenix sunburst pattern or fireburst pattern, and a B for broad. And the ebonite feed is also custom made in the Leonardo shops in Naples, Italy. The nib and the feed are friction fit into the section. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into the ebonite that meets with the top of the section to seal the nib from evaporation. The cap posts deeply and securely, and although it makes the pen slightly long, the cap is so light it doesn't seriously unbalance the pen. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough in the hand to write with comfortably, and its wide girth fills your hand and makes it an exceptionally ergonomic writing instrument. The section is thick and comparable in size and shape to the section of a Mont Blanc 149, and these cap threads here are slightly sharper than those on my MZG 2.0 acrylic, but they're not obtrusive in any way at all. I bought this pen from Wonder Pens in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for $615 Canadian, which is about $460 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the limited edition Leonardo MZG Masterpiece in Ebonite with a Leonardo MZG Dutch Pen Show 2021. This is a limited edition as well, 80 of 100 pieces, and it's in the gorgeous acrylic Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. And here's a Ranga 4C in black ebonite, a Ranga 3C in red ebonite, an Opus 88 Bella Japanese eyedropper in red swirl, and a Pilot Metropolitan for scale. You can see how these pens dwarf this tiny Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Both Leonardo Momento Zero Grandes are 14 karat gold number six size nibs, and they post deep enough to be comfortable writing with them posted. All three of these pens are way too long to write with as far as I'm concerned when they're posted. They become extremely long. These are number six size steel nibs on the two Rangas and the Opus 88. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. They're all nicely sized and comfortable in the hand, unposted. And the Ranga Ebonite and the Leonardo Ebonite, all three of them have that warm Ebonite feel to them. Although there's a much more professional and polished look to the Ebonite on the Leonardo. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, as always. And this is the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Ebonite. rosewood and it has a 14 karat gold broad number six size nib let's check the wetness well this pen is very very wet indeed and it is so ultra smooth but you might be able to hear, I'm gonna be quiet here. Just a hint of feedback. Lovely, lovely writing experience. It's one of those that you pick up and when you write with it, you go, oh my God. And the ink today 
is the ink that came with the pen, which is Leonardo Black. And it's a nice silky black. My favorite black ink is Hiroshizuku Takesumi. Uh, and this rivals that ink. It's very nice indeed. As to line variation, there is some bounce to this nib, but as you can see, it gets very, very wet when you push it. And that's not necessary because it has a bit of line variation without any pressure whatsoever because the horizontal line is 0.5 millimeters and the vertical line is 0.7 millimeters which makes it a western fine to almost a broad or a Japanese fine medium to broad on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description and for our quote and for some reverse writing it's actually very smooth but it's drying out quite a bit so not designed for it and some quick writing Well, and you can probably tell this is a gusher and the feed has no difficulty keeping up at all. That ebonite just sucks up ink like a sponge and this is still wet. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, put it this way. I love this pen while in my hand. I love this pen when it's on its stand. I love this pen inside its box. I love this pen while writing Fox. I love this pen both here and there. I love this pen most everywhere. I love this pen, Sam I am. I'll have this pen instead of spam. I don't like spam! I bought this broad nib thinking that if I didn't like the way it wrote, I could have Jack cut it into an architect for me. But this writes like a dream. A wet dream, to be sure. <coughs> but it has such wonderful natural line variation and glides so smoothly over the page, I'd have to be crazy to cut this nib into anything other than what it is. And I'm not insane. My mother had me tested. <laughs> this is the most expensive pen I've ever owned, and even though I can't think of a single negative thing to say about it, it still doesn't replace my previous grail pen, my Pelican M800, as the finest pen in my collection. The Pelican may not be the most beautiful or flashiest pen, although it is certainly not as bland as a black and gold pen. But in every way, a pen needs to be perfect, how it feels in my hand, the balance, how it behaves on the page. The M800 is perfect. I can pick it up and write with it under any circumstances where this masterpiece of a Leonardo just feels so special and rare that I would never consider taking it out clipped to a notebook in my jacket pocket or the pen gods forbid in my pants pocket. I think my Pelican M800 has done all of that. Not often, but sometimes. And that is even considering this is only slightly less expensive than the Leonardo. All I can say about the masterpiece in conclusion is that Leonardo is currently making some of the most beautiful and some of the finest fountain pens on the planet. They are constantly creating new models, updating their designs, and coming out with new finishes and new filling systems. Salvatore has even announced a new lever filler that will be available soon. Can't wait. Pelican, like Lamy and their umpteen million new colors of the Safari, keeps coming up with new colors for their M600 and under lines, but nothing new in the M800. The same five colors, black, gray, blue, green, and red. Very creative. I know that there are special editions now and then, but the pen hasn't changed. Well, the only thing it has changed is that they removed the transparency of the barrels on the new M800 and M1000 models. So my Pelican holds its position as the best all-round fountain pen in my collection, but just by the transparent skin on its barrel, because Leonardo continues to innovate and create in glorious new ways. If and when Leonardo makes the original Momento Zero into a piston filler with a La Fenice gold nib, my Pelican might get dethroned. And there you have it. 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, and yes, the link does work. It doesn't look like it works, but it does. Because I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you use that link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.